Are you seriously gonna eat you fat? I mean, then some of you might be like, continue. Why would I want to start this? Sensitive. She's sensitive. She's. You are listening to the Tammy Talks Unscripted Healing Podcast, where we share stories that are, you guessed it, unscripted. That's the thing. This journey doesn't. It doesn't really end. We have a general sense of the topic each episode, but really the whole point is just to show up and be authentic and let our inner child speak its truth. And I have continued to work through that story of constantly hearing, well, we don't want got a hot dog on our hands. Yeah, guess what, Mr. Sabatsky, you do. So I'm so excited that you are here and it is my hope that you hear yourself somewhere in the story so that way you can feel seen and heard as well. So let's start talking. Welcome to the Tammy Talks Unscripted Healing Podcast. I am so excited to bring you guys what I'm going to call a bonus episode because this one is super special. This one is super close to my heart, but it is going to be a very different style because we're not going to have just one guest on here. There are going to be six amazing women on this call because this is kind of a reunion from when Zoe and I hosted our Inner Child Healing retreat out in Sedona, Arizona this last April. And so I am so excited to welcome Zoe back on the podcast and have her share her experience being a part of it because I had been working with this group of women in most of them went through fiercely focused. Most of the actually all of them went through nutrition for the soul. So they were very immersed in inner child work. And so this felt like kind of the graduation for the work that they had done. And because Zoe and I have always dreamed of working together and we work so well together, it just didn't feel right to not have her be a part of the retreat. And I'm so glad that I listened to my intuition. I was originally just going to have her join me to help like do all the stuff in the kitchen and just all the behind the scenes stuff. And I was like, wait a second, you're like an incredible healer and all of these things. Like, no, like you need to be like a part of this and co-host this with me. And and we did it and we totally kind of pulled it together, even though we we knew what we wanted to come out of it and really trusted our intuition to guide the experience. And it was just so incredible. And so I'm going to keep this intro short and sweet because I want you guys to be able to hear from all of these women and gain their experience because guess what? Zoe and I are back at it. We are hosting another inner child healing retreat this November, November 14th through 17th. We only have eight spots. Eight spots because this is super intimate. So just a little FYI, there's going to be all kinds of information below here for you if you want to get in on that. And yeah, yeah. And we even made some really cool updates and added a personal like one-on-one coaching call before the retreat. We have group calls before the retreat. We have a group call after the retreat. We added time to the retreat. So lots of really amazing updates that that we have coming for those of you that are ready to go on your inner child healing experience in November. So I'm going to zip it. I'm going to let Zoe on. Her and I are going to chat a little bit. And then we're going to welcome all the other ladies on here in just a bit. All right. I am back with my dear friend Zoe, who you guys are getting used to seeing on here now. And yeah, so I brought Zoe along and we totally tag team this retreat and had such an incredible experience. And what I love most about working with Zoe. One, we just complement each other very well. If you guys have noticed, she has very grounded energy and I'm always like, so that, that helped. But because we really trusted our intuition and kind of ebbed and flowed with the experience and it just turned out really cool. So what was your kind of overall take on the experience? Because you hadn't know, or hadn't met any of these women really before we went out there. Like I had worked with them for years, but this was like brand new. I just kind of threw you in like, hey, do your magic. You know, what's funny about that is I actually don't like knowing anything about anybody before I work with them. That's oh, actually yeah. How, yeah. So we're a little bit different. than Well, because we do different stuff, but yeah. I don't like to know anything. And I, I just like to, you know, kind of see what comes and work with the energy. And so um I kind of liked that. I didn't really know a whole lot. Um, but yet you but knew they, so much, which is yes. a testament to your gifts. But it, it it just allowed this, I don't know, to really be in the flow and just kind of without any preconceived um, idea. Yeah. 
to just really allow whatever was coming forward and to just be able to create the space that needed to be created in the moments. And um, yeah, so I, I personally thrive in, in, in that kind of environment. So that, that was that was good for me. Yeah. Well, like I said, and you definitely thrived because all the women just immediately, it was like they knew you forever, which is the same way I felt when I met you. I was like, have we <laughs> several past <laughs> lives? So you know, that way, though, with all the women just felt like I already knew them. And yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it was just such a magical yeah. time, it really was um, for the women, but also I feel yeah. like for us, it was. Oh my gosh. Just, I just you know. got goosebumps as soon as you said that. Like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, right. there it is yeah. there it is yeah i yeah. just it was uh it felt i think when i came home i was just like riding high because oh, it yeah. just felt like this was this was it like helping women heal in a really high vibe place and um just all of it it just kind of connected and it was just extra magical yeah. i think i wrote it for a really long time <laughs> Well, and something I actually had this conversation with Sarah, who's going to be hopping on here earlier this week, you know, about really like stepping into our gifts and into our power and all these things. I'm like, just so you know, Zoe and I literally had a conversation last week and we put on capes to remind ourselves to put on our superhero capes to remind ourselves like, yes, like we call it what we do. And this is the work that we do. And in that experience, like we knew it was going to be magical. We knew it was going to be trans transformational but I don't think we were even prepared for what happened like this oh maybe I should say this when the ladies get on there but we actually had like a new tagline that came out of the retreat and excuse my language but we're like what the fuck just happened because it was just like mind-blowing what was happening the epiphanies these women were having the ahas the breakthroughs it, like again I have so many goosebumps right now because that's really we weren't even prepared Constant. Yeah, there were yeah. so many. It was one after another. It was this woman. It was that woman. It was yeah. how they played off of each other. Like, oh my gosh. Like you just, it's going to be so hard, even though you're going to be able to hear from all these women to like truly grasp the energy and the healing that happened out there because it was, it was so incredible, like truly life-changing for all of us. Yes. And I think certainly for us to be able to really step into our roles and feel really confident that this is a huge part of the work that we're supposed to be doing and guiding women and maybe someday men on these retreats because of how much of a game changer it was. And like really just, and that's what's really cool about retreats is you're just immersed in it, right? Whereas if we go about our everyday life, like we're in and out of our healing journey and all that kind of stuff and life gets in the way and this is like, nope, we're in it for these like three, four days. And it's amazing what can happen because your inner child's like, wow, you made this commitment for me. You took time off of work. You made this investment for me to connect with me. Like, whoa. Yeah. Pretty exciting stuff. So, well, I see our ladies are all waiting in the waiting room for us. So yes. I am going to bring them on. And yeah. And as always, we're going to just roll with this. All right, I am back with all of these lovely, amazing women that Zoe and I were blessed to have out in Sedona with us. And we just let them do a little catch up before we brought them on live with all of you. So because it's it's been a few months and the connection these women formed with one another was just absolutely incredible. And I get goosebumps just thinking about like that whole phrase women supporting women like whoa like literally the epitome of that and there was only two of you that actually knew each other before this so a lot of you same with Zoe like not knowing any of you coming in a lot of you didn't know each other coming in and so to see the friendship and the bond that formed between all of you was just so so incredible but we want to kick this off and just kind of jump right in and kind of hear from you guys about what was it that made you decide to go on this inner child healing retreat that, let's be honest, kind of, I mean, it had been planted, the seed had been planted for a long time, but this one kind of got like thrown at you. Like, hey, we're doing this. Who wants to come and play? 
All right. So Julie, share a little bit with us about what it was that made you decide to join us on this retreat. So super interesting because I almost didn't go. I know. Um, And I actually had been planning to go for a long time. Like it was, I mean, maybe secret, probably haven't ever even told anyone. But like when you put the whole program out, it was actually the retreat that drew me to go. I'm like, I'm going to go and like, I'm going to do something for myself. And this is really exciting. And so when you introduced and you were saying, and you know, it was like, it's not that we didn't have it all planned, but then it was like, wham, it was planned. And then it was like, and I'm, well, I'm kind of a planner. Kind of. Um, and so just kind of like, I mean, like I typically any vacation that I go on, have a plan, a backup plan, a backup plan to that backup plan. And just in case that doesn't work, there's just an extra couple options. <laughs> and so, um, you know, just, you know, a, a slight interesting personality around all of that. And so the actual, it being a little kind of, like, I just got really uncomfortable and I'm like, yeah. I don't know that I can do this. And then I saw the podcast with you and Zoe, Zoe and yeah. oh, I, forgot I was that. like, I watched it one afternoon and I'm like, Julie, what's your problem? I just lighten up. Like, it's really okay. As a matter of fact, I don't even think you have to plan this. You just have to find a flight and you just have to say you're going. Mm-hmm. That's it. And so, um, you know, and so I remember texting and being like, is it too late? And you were having lunch yeah, with a couple of people that were going and you yeah. all like FaceTimed me and you're like, no, no, it's not too late and sent a picture. And so um, it's just very interesting because that probably is also something that, you know, I've um, worked on and, and needed to work on since the retreat that um, is maybe the reason that it might have even kept me from almost not being there, um, yeah. even though I had planned for a long time. So, um, yeah. So it was I love that. Right. And I think so many people can relate to that sense of control and needing to know every aspect of it. And what these women we may not have realized that Zoe and I are not like that. And we are very like we trust our intuition. We know everything's going to work out. We just. Yeah. And so we definitely challenged many of these women in that regard. And but we also we, we have learned and are now much more planned out for this next one. But I love that you just listen to your intuition to even plus play on that podcast episode and to listen to what came up for you. And like, you know what, actually, I do need to be out there and connect with these women. And wow, like, what a cool experience you had because you did listen. So yay. I love it. I love it. Thank you for sharing. All right, Sarah, how about you? What was it that made you decide to go on this retreat? Ultimately, it was trust and faith that the journey that I had been pursuing with trying to heal this part of me that I didn't realize was even a part of what I needed to heal. Um, I had only just skimmed the surface and I had just started down this path. And the retreat initially, I mean, it it was terrifying to me (laughs) to think of like being with a group of people I didn't know and then being vulnerable with things like this that are scary on my own, let alone with people I don't know. Um, But ultimately it, it, felt like this is the next right thing to do for me. Um, I don't know what this is. I don't know where it's going to lead me. I don't know how I'm going to come out of it. But trusting that this was part of what I needed to do to dive deeper into um, this healing journey that I had been on. And um, I was, it was proving to be um, a really positive for me in terms of my growth and my mental health and all of the things. And so it just felt like something I had to be a part of in order to continue on that process. I love it. I love it. Thank you for sharing. And again, just another example of listening and trusting. Because when we let ego get in there, there's a million reasons why we would not do something like this. And I just want to honor all of you that you you listened and made that commitment. And like I was sharing with Zoe, I think before you all got on here about what that feels like for your inner child to be like, you took time off work for me. You made this investment for me. Like, 
Like you're going to connect with just me for the, you know, these few days, like, whoa, that's so, so powerful. And that really came through for all of you. So, so those of you that are new to listening to this one, Colleen also joined me for an episode on the Tammy Talks Unscripted Healing Podcast and shared her story. But if you want to give a little snippet, because the reason that you came out was also pretty dang significant. Well, I will do a quick brief a little rundown here, but we did do um, some work previous to the retreat. So one-on-one coaching with Tammy was good. I hadn't met Zoe yet besides doing a couple healing sessions and they were still on my mind. You know, I was still fresh, still new for that. But um, same as Sarah. So when I first heard about it, I was like a year prior to us even getting to know about the retreat, like I told Tammy after she had went out herself for the retreat that I had to be in Sedona. Like just something about it was just like thriving for my attention. And I really wanted to get out there. So little little did I know that her and Zoe were still working very hard and deep with this retreat. And she was sitting there taking little notes, you know, and she's like, yeah, I'm working on this. So um, come to find out, we ended up getting um, pregnant and had a baby with congenital heart defect who had lived for seven days. And he actually was the, uh, the last initial jump for me to believe and have faith and to reconnect with my inner self to find my own gifts. So a lot to give in there. And my husband did not want to send me on my own. <laughs> he didn't trust the universe to be around all of these beautiful ladies, but I had full trust. I didn't care who I was going with. I didn't care who I was going to be with in the same room, but I was still by myself. But um, ended up being my whole family. We ended up driving down. We didn't fly. Um, and it was the most magical experience, not just for myself, but for my. So it was so fun. Awesome. Yes. Thank you so much. Cause that was really powerful. And maybe we can get into this a little bit, but when you shared your story that first night, it triggered a really powerful yes. like, memory. And I mean, I don't even know. Memory doesn't even feel like the right word, but it triggered something for Sarah. And that kind of brings me into the, this next our little question about the inner child healing hike. And what's interesting about this, and this is where, you know, Zoe and I were talking earlier about how we really had to trust in our gifts in doing this. And I almost kind of hired someone else to lead the inner child healing hike because I took a trip, solo trip out to Sedona for my 40th birthday had this amazing experience. And I was like, oh, maybe I'll have him do it. So I was on the phone. I had this guy lined up to do this. And then I was talking to Zoe. I'm like, something about this doesn't feel right. Like, I think we need to do this. I think, it, I think we're supposed to do this. And thank goodness I listened. And my people pleaser was like crawling out of my skin. The fact that I had to go back and tell this guy, ooh, change of plans. But I'm so, so glad I did. And I will never forget before we even started got going Sarah pulls me aside and she's like I need you and I don't know if you want to share any parts of that but it was because Colleen shared something that helped trigger you and this is the power of sharing stories and connecting with women connecting with people and opening yourself up and being vulnerable because it allows someone else to maybe have that aha or be vulnerable and stuff too. And that was such a beautiful example of that. So share, I'll let you kind of share a little bit of what that moment was like, because that was, that kicked it off. <laughs> what is going on? Yeah, we were like two minutes into this hike. So we had literally barely finished like the grounding that we started yeah. at the end. We hadn't even started walking yet. Um, you know, the first night of the retreat, um, I was so grateful that we all got to share a bit about ourselves and the journey that we had been on, why we were there. Um, and it really set the stage for forming relationships and bonds and um, being vulnerable amongst this group, because really that was what led to all of the healing that we saw that weekend, all of the growth that we saw that weekend was setting the stage and getting to know each other and being really raw about it that yeah. first night when we yeah. had met each other. Um, Colleen shared about her son and the journey she had been on, which was 
very recent uh, to when this this retreat happened. Um, and so the next day, the hike that we were going on, uh, Tammy, is it okay if I talk a little bit about the format of the hikes? It kind of yeah, don't give it all away. Yeah, yeah. 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 we'll give it all away. But really, considering um, different times of your your life, like starting from the very beginning. And looking at different pieces of your life and the the circumstances and the context around what was happening at those different times of your life. And so Colleen's story had triggered, not triggered, but like brought something up for me in that when, um, I have a younger sister. She's five years younger than me. Um, but between her and I being born, my parents actually had had another daughter when I was two. Um, and she had a heart defect and she was alive for two to three days. Um, but the only reason that I had known about this was the small, very small picture that sits on my mom's dresser. Um, but it wasn't something that my parents ever talked about. It wasn't something that was part of our lives. That was literally the only way I knew. Um, and what Colleen was sharing with me throughout the weekend was how much she was keeping the memory of her son alive and, and with their family amongst all of her ki the kids and the amazing things that she's doing to keep him there, right? And so it was a trigger for me at the beginning of this hike that this had happened at a point in my life where I don't remember it. I know it happened, but really required me to consider knowing uh, the family dynamic I have. My family is not an emotional one. Um, they don't openly discuss feelings or, or, or anything. Um, and so... I immediately was hit at the beginning of that hike that this had happened when I was two yeah. and knowing the dynamic and the, you know, the lack of communication that I had probably been carrying a lot of the grief and that energy that my peers had during that time that I had never even considered to be part of my story before. And yet it was this huge, oh, I have moment of like, oh my gosh. This happened and this energy was there and it was never really worked through, right? And so that was kind of how I started my journey, like setting the stage. And so Colleen's story yeah. had an immediate impact on my journey through that weekend, but also moving forward. Well, you're right. And it wasn't even, you had said to me, like, have I been carrying this for my entire family? Like, not even just the the energy that you might have felt around that because again even as a two-year-old like you're really intuitive and picking up on like what just happened why are mommy and daddy sad like there's so many things as kids that we you pick up and you absorb and so not even knowing that you needed to process that but let alone your parents and so what we absorb and so you're like i I carrying this for everybody and like yeah likely so that was that was a big big release and a quite quite the kickoff to yeah. Yeah. That was powerful. So Karen, I'm going to turn it over to you and going into this next question about how did this healing hike help you connect with little Karen? As usual, you and I were in C. Did you know I wanted to speak up? I just knew it. <laughs> I was, I'm already crying. Um, yes, I haven't really shared this with anybody at home um only two or three people i don't even what was your question i wasn't even listening to the question because i'm so emotional well it's i to share your experience on the inner child healing hike like how did it help you connect okay. with little karen because yeah did. oh so yeah there was so much happening with all of us from the very beginning like sarah said i mean we hadn't really even started sarah's having her thing go on and it, in hindsight, it was not very far into the hike, I don't think. I don't know no. how far we'd gone, but um, I, I will say I was so excited about that weekend and didn't have an ounce of fear about it, even though I knew no one really but Tammy, because I was just excited to go play. And I felt ready. And I didn't know what that meant. And I found out pretty quickly I think this happened at the very front of the hike because I think all the work that I've done for years 
was getting me ready for her. So, and it's hard for me to talk about because it's so poignant and so powerful that I don't feel like my words do it justice. Um, but you, you all were there, you know, we, yep. we were all silent and I was quiet and I was doing what I do when I'm a Tammy and I try to do on a day-to-day basis, which is just listen to my gut. Not overthink. If I feel like walking that way, I walk that way. If I feel like standing on a stump, I stand on a stump. If I feel like going over here, I go over here. Well, I felt like going off to the side and going up on this little tiny race hill behind this really pretty tree. And I just got quiet. And um, my eyes were shut and I was just listening to the silence of the wind and it was just, and felt the sun on my face. It was so beautiful. And all of a sudden I felt, see, it's hard for me to say this because it just doesn't do it justice. I, I felt and saw this image of um, almost like a ghostly transparent small image come and come inside of me. And it was this powerful, like <clears throat> deep breath with me. And I was standing there thinking, did that just happen? It just happened. I know something happened. Oh, it, 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 I'm not doing it justice. It was this overwhelming, powerful, like spiritual gust of wind that came in and just landed with me. And I immediately ran back to find Tammy and Zoe. And, 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 and I could almost could talk. I don't even know what I said to you. I honestly, uh, I didn't I, know what was happening. I was like, is did something happen? Is something wrong? Cause you were like hyperventilating. You're like, mm. like you, it was really hard for you to form words. It was like, oh, oh. my goodness, what just happened? Yeah. Uh, well, happened was yeah and I think what I kept saying was she's here yeah she found me um and she is little Karen like not not Karen when I was two not Karen when I was three but as my God intended me to be placed in my mother's womb the heart of who I was intended to be. A little infant Karen just came into me in such a powerful, powerful way. Um, good. Yeah, I have no idea. I, 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 was, I was crying. I couldn't talk. Um, yeah. And then I took off speed walking. Yeah. Um, I should have seen her. It was just like, she was just gone and just... Like the joy that you had throughout most of that hike after that, like you were dancing. We just, we're like, what, where'd she go? It's just, I can't even explain. I can't explain it either. And what that was like, I just, I have the image and I have the feeling of it, but I will just never, I think all of us like just seeing you just take off. And it was, again, it's just joy. It felt like so yeah. much joy coming from you. Like that was, wasn't the only like major revelation and things like digging deep and finding your power that happened for you on that hike. No. Um, that was the that initial was... breakthrough, right? And then it just kind of kept like building on top of each other uh, to the point where I think for me, it was like when you started running, it was just, just the most beautiful thing because it was just you were it's like you were free and and just filled with all of the things um it was it was just a really really powerful moment that just i felt free and light i felt very light yeah which i think is why i started just speed walking joyfully as fast as i could because i felt so light um I wanted to go screen from the roof. She's here. She's here. She's here. I wanted to go play with her. I had this sense of, I, I want to go play. Yeah. We want to go play. And so I didn't want to play and I wanted to go back, but we'll talk about that probably in a little bit. Yes. Yes. <laughs> we will get there. Oh, uh, how about you, Lisa? I know you had a big moment out on the hike as well. If you want to share a little bit. The one that 
um, sticks with me probably was when Zoe and Colleen and I were walking and talking about, we were talking about gifts and different things, but then Zoe and I started really talking and spent a lot of time growing up with my aunt, um, because my parents owned their own business and it was just easier for them to have me be with my aunt, who was also my godmother and she wasn't married and, um, she had a friend and oftentimes they would get together and he would drink or they would drink. Typically he'd go home and, um, I just remember this one night. She, I woke up and she had been sleeping with me and he apparently slept in her room. And I said that was very unusual. And I shared with Sully that something later, um, when he would come and visit, he had come to visit at my parents' house. I was the only one home and I was very uncomfortable and something just doesn't, didn't feel right. And I never said anything to my parents. And I just, to this day, it still bothers me. I know that something happened either to her or to me, or, or he tried something. And my aunt stopped him. I don't know. Um, but the validation that I received, that little Lisa received, that it was true. Um, in speaking with, with Zoe. And then Tammy, who came up and you talked me through it too. And just, that's what I needed. That was something that I needed. And I continue to need that. Um, things like that come up. You know, and I, I need to have that validation and know that what little Lisa has been suppressing for so long doesn't need to be suppressed because those are the things, those are the things that led me to be the 300 pound adult. And I need to honor that. I need to get through those things. And that's why I went to the retreat is yeah. that I could honor both and so yeah. and they get through these things. Well, and that's just it is when things do come up, like to have that kind of support around you yeah. and what, again, maybe to receive validation or to just feel held in that space without any judgment, without questioning or anything like that, but to just to sit in that with people that will hold space for you. I don't know, Zoe, you want to speak to any of that at all? Well, um, I, and I, I think it's just important to point out that through this whole retreat, <laughs> we're getting to some deep, like the root causes yeah. of a lot of things that are mm -hmm. showing up in our lives as adults in our present lives. And we're getting to the root of yeah the problem and that's what when you get to the root and start understanding the root mm -hmm. then you can start understanding the patterns and the things yeah. that are coming in your adult life and that's what kind of catapults this healing and and really the changes and all that that needs to happen in order to get back to our core selves and get back to you know who we truly are meant to be and living the way that we truly, truly want to be living free at peace and joy. Yeah. Yeah. And so much of that happened again, when I mentioned that your inner child was like, so excited that you're taking this time to connect with her. She's like, Oh, okay. They're ready to mm -hmm. like connect with me again. They're ready to hear this story. They're ready for this memory because they're in this environment. They are supported. And so that's where you can almost like accelerate the process in a way there's, that's even possible, but it really did. It felt like it just kind of catapulted all of you because of the ahas and the breakthroughs that each of you had. And to be able to witness it within one another, I think was also incredibly powerful. And, what and we is, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, was when, when there was a breakthrough, how... Now it was like these layers came off and all of you would go through this all of a sudden 
Karen's running, Sarah's screaming at the top of her lungs. <laughs> Lisa was climbing things and pushing herself, doing the things that she would have never done before. Colleen, you're like, you know, jumping off stuff. And, and, um, Julie was, we didn't know where Julie went for a while. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But she was doing her just took thing. Off and we're like, Whoa. I'm going to trust that Julie is doing whatever Julie needs to do right now. And, and when you came back, back, like you did. Do you want to share a little bit about what that was like to just, and this was again, and Julie had already mentioned, like, she's like kind of I don't, like a rule follower, like do the things, but you just totally did what you felt like you needed to do in that moment. And it was awesome. You didn't feel like, oh, I should stay with the group or I should, you just did what you needed to do. And it was beautiful. So I want to just share a little bit about that experience. Cause that was like, it felt like out of character for you, but it was so beautiful to just watch you go. Yeah, it was um, an opportunity kind of in a stage of my life when it really hit me that I realized that's the time of my life that I could very much pinpoint that I made decisions based on what other people needed. Yeah. It was best for other people. Mm -hmm. It was that like I could true, like I could see it. I could see my life there. I could see the pivotal moments of um, how uh, the, the direction of my life took in that. And um, yeah, and it was also wonderful because I just needed some time to be able to, because I, I couldn't really understand it. And it was like all these memories were flooding and, um, you know, working through it. And I'm like, I just... So I just kept walking. And then all of a sudden I was like, whoa, well, I am way, way, way away from them. So I'll just start heading back that way. I think they'll be coming sometime. But it never felt like um, it was pretty cool because it never felt like I was like, I didn't feel excluded. I didn't feel like I wasn't a part of something. And I just felt full permission to be like, ah, oh, like something's going on here. And like, I just need to like pay attention to it. Because it was so clear that that was the moment in my life that took me down the direction of kind of, you know, where I probably um, continue to still have some of those pivotal moments um, in my adult life. Well, and that's what, you know, we had said from the very beginning, like, there is no right or wrong way to go about this. We All of you are going to process different. And, and you guys, like, took that assignment and like understood it was so beautiful because you all did you process so differently on that hike there was times when you needed to talk with someone there was times when you needed to go out by yourself again there was times where we needed to climb and sarah's moment like whoa like i have the video of this still and i have watched it many times where yeah like you spoke from your soul like and let us all hear it and it was so powerful and like I felt like the whole mountain was like shaking <laughs> when we all like screamed together. And it was like that. I felt like it was a huge release for so many of us. But when you got up there and spoke and like chucked that rock, I was like, watch out world. This girl has, huh? She is ready. <laughs> yeah, I think the hike, um, just the setting, right? Yeah. Outside of like everything that Sedona is, right? The the energy there and just everything that that amazing place is and the setting in terms of being on this trail in the mountains with this group of people and having the freedom to be able to explore that and, and work through this hike in whatever way you need to at different times, depending on what you're processing and what you're thinking through and working through. And for me, like, the physical manifestation or the physical evolution of some of the things that I needed to work through and being able to work through anger and work through, you know, suppression, so uh, like expression of my voice, my opinions, who I am as a person and not always being free with that and being able to manifest that in a way where I can physically chuck a rock off the side of a mountain and then scream at the top of my lungs was so freeing and healing because it's not something like it's not something that I would do otherwise that I would have the courage to do otherwise that I would like 
be prompted to do otherwise, but you have the ability, we had the ability in that setting and in that time and in that space with these people to do whatever we needed to do to work through whatever was coming, which was the most freeing thing I have probably ever felt. Well, and I was so proud of all of you for like, you told Ego, you got to stay down at the bottom of this mountain because you don't get to judge this experience. You don't get to tell, like, even with Karen, like it did creep in for a second. You're like, did that really happen? Like there was a moment where you wanted to question, did that really happen? You know, and even probably just sharing it now, like, should I say this on this? Because if people think I'm weird, like that happened, like, no, we all know that happened. You know that happened. And Ego is what will question that or tell you, you can't yell on a mountain. You can't throw a rock. You can't go off by like it. And you guys did not let Ego come to this party. And that made all the difference in the world. And a lot of it was because you have done so much of this work and you were like fully invested. Like I'm getting the most out of this experience. And that's what allowed you to have those moments. And the reason that happened is because your inner child and your ego trusted you. If your ego doesn't trust you, it will creep in there and try to take over. But it like sat back and let all of you have the experience you needed to have. And your inner child trusted you enough to give you those ahas to make those moments happen. And that was, again, a true testament to the work that you have done leading up to it. But even in that moment, because you were so committed to it. So that was absolutely beautiful. Um, I want to move on from the hike in just a second. But I do want to talk about what happened near the end. Because so we're all having these breakthrough moments, right? And just like riding these highs and all this stuff. And the day before when Zoe and I went out to like map the hike, we're like, we got to get back and get groceries. So we had to like turn around. So we didn't actually know like how long it was going the other way. Didn't feel like, like, oh, this is totally doable. And we had asked some people like, okay, like, you know, where is the end? And they're like, oh, it's just like 20 minutes. I swear someone said 20 minutes. It was not 20 minutes. But everything happens as it's supposed to, right? Because there was a whole other lesson in this hike was because now everyone was kind of like ready to be done. Like, okay, I had this moment. Like, let's go back. And the hike was not over. Granted, it was like, it was descending. But it got long. And now we're all kind of like the energy is waning. People are getting hungry. And so it was such a powerful moment of, are you going to hang in when it gets tough? Right? And that is like the healing journey because it's going to get hard. You're going to have those moments where you want to stop, where you want to quit, where you want to sit down. And these women kept going, like pushing through physical pain, getting, you know, thirsty and all of the things, but like to see each of you and even to like wait for each other and cheer each other on. And it was so powerful and so beautiful. And it like, so it absolutely happened the way it was supposed to, to remind all of us, like, it's not all like rainbows and sunshines and beautiful aha moments. There's still going to be stuff you're going to have to work through and you got to stick with it and you got to, you got to keep going. And you did. And it was like, so, so beautiful. And then I'll share this little story, but I do want to, I know if Karen, you want to talk about your experience on there, because that was really powerful for you. But these right towards the end, and it was like, right when the morale was like dipping. Oh shit. Like, I think Zoe and I were like, are we going to save this? You know, we just had this amazing experience. All of a sudden. What well, those girls probably like 10, 12, probably like seven girls on mountain bikes come racing past us. And it was just like, whoa, like this, you know, surge of energy. Well, one of the girls fell over on her bike. And everybody, everybody instinctually like wanted to go and help her immediately, you know, to, <laughs> to go help her, to go pick her back up, cheering her on. And this little girl just got back up and kept going. And it was like everything that we needed in that moment to be like, one, that's exactly what everyone's inner child needed. It was like, this feels like falling down. You get back up and you keep going. And that little girl was the example of what we all needed to do. But it was also like, do you see the way that we all like wanted to parent her and support her and cheer her on? That's exactly what everyone needed to do for their inner child. It was so like the timing of it. Like you can't make that stuff up. So it was pretty, it was pretty powerful. That gave us enough surge to actually finish it. But Karen, do you want to share a little bit about kind of what the end of that hike was like for you? Because that was a turning point for you as well, I think. 
I do, but I feel compelled to share one other thing. Um, at some point, this this is why having Zoe and and Tammy with us was so important. Um, I do want to talk about the end, but I for some reason feel like yeah. I have to share this. Go. So I had this amazing experience and felt so light and joyful and what and, and playful and somewhere along the way i don't know half hour 45 minutes down the road i felt this overwhelming pull to go back to my tree and just hang out with little care and and i a good few minutes praying meditating okay what part of me is this coming from is this is this a healthy part? Is it what part? And I was I basically was convinced I needed to go back to my tree, hang out with little Karen, and 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 spend some quiet time. Like I was feeling almost protective. Yeah. Um, and th- thankfully, I said something. I think it was about Zoe, and and you gently suggested, and it was gentle. You know, maybe you can bring her with you. And I just kept going. Um, but left to my own devices, I would have missed the opportunity to figuratively and literally carry her with me to the end of the hike. So uh, I am not in the best physical shape. And, and I've got it's actual issues with one of my knees and my but And Tammy knew, everybody knew, I was sure that I'd be... I wasn't sure how I felt about going on this hike. I wasn't sure I'd make it. And if you had told me we were going to go five or six miles, I would have said, Mm-mm. um, by the time we got to the point that Tammy described, uh, with the little girls, I was at a point where I had to start counting steps just be- to distract myself because I was in a, a, a lot of legit discomfort and, um, everybody was so patient with me. And I kept going. I didn't think I was going to make it. There were several times when I thought I was going to have to stop and have you guys like somehow come back and get me. Um, but I didn't stop. I kept going. I don't even remember much about that, except I remember, I remember Lisa being with me. I remember Lisa being super patient. Um, I remember my shame falling away. I remember I just felt like I, I'm going to do this. Um, I didn't feel the shame and embarrassment that normally I would about, oh, I'm holding everybody up. Um, yeah, I, it, it was another one of those really super powerful moments that I, I don't even remember all of the, the shifts that happened. Aaron, if I can jump in there, do you remember at the end when we got back and we all piled into the car and you shared that with us? Yeah. And you were crying. You started crying and you said, I didn't feel any shame around any of that. And like the whole car was in tears within like 2.2 seconds because it was such a moment for you. And we were all so grateful to be witness to that. That was powerful because again, especially as women, all the shame that we carry. Oh my gosh, the guilt and shame is so heavy, so heavy. And so for in that moment, especially in situations like that, especially when it's revolved around our weight and how are we perceived and all those things, like how many of us women have been carrying that our entire lives? And in that moment to feel like I didn't even have any of that, like I let that go. Like that was, that was powerful for all of us because I know every single one of us have carried shame in our life in one way or another, or all of them, all of the above over here. So that was, that was profound to be able to witness that. And so it was, that's the other thing is to be able to allow people to witness you in that realness and that rawness and that vulnerability. Like that's what your inner child has always want, like to feel accepted and loved no matter what, when they're struggling, when they're falling down, when they're having challenges, like that's when our inner child needs us the most. And Karen did not abandon her. Like that was so powerful. Because ego would have really swept in there and totally made you disconnect from her all over again. And you did not let that happen. 
And it was it was powerful for all of us to witness. So, oh my gosh. Yeah, so the, I, I think I shared this when Zoe and I were on the call, like right before you guys, that we soon decided that the tagline for the hike was, what the fuck just happened? Like that was good. Let's go on another inner child healing hike. And that was going to be the new tagline because it was. I, I, we said that so many times throughout the retreat. Like, what just happened with the explicit? Because that was <laughs> like, whoa, whoa. So that was that was just Friday. Like, that was like our first full day. We came in Thursday night. Everyone got to meet each other. And then Friday, that was the day. Like, whoa, it was so like day one. And. And day two, we were, you know, allowing them to do some integration, but also trying to move into kind of our highest self. Like we had really taken care of our inner child on Friday and wanting to take that, like, okay, what does your inner child need from you? And who does she believe you to be? Who has she always wanted you to be? How do you show up for her in the world? You know, and that was kind of leading into Saturday where we were doing more highest self type stuff and doing some activations. And so, I'll let Zoe kind of take it from here on what that was like, because you really led us through some powerful meditations and some healing. And then we we got to experience Sedona vortexes and the energy from that. And and I do want to have some of you talk about that, because I know some of you came in like not sure about like this energy stuff. And but you were just really open to it. And I think that's really important for people to hear because it is something new to a lot of people and what this experience was like to have this different component into healing, you know, like you don't maybe get that in traditional therapy or counseling or things like that. And so for people to be open to that was, was really powerful. I'm assuming that's my cue. Yeah. Sorry. (laughs) Get away. Um, I mean, yeah, we, we added that, I mean, that's what I do is the energy healing, but that component of our energetic body is so, so important because we pick up stuff through our entire life and we carry things. And that some, sometimes, you know, I, I think of our energetic body like a Velcro. Anytime anything happens or negative or trauma, like we're putting these like Velcro balls you know, or attaching, eventually it starts getting super heavy or they're like backpacks or filling our backpacks with rock gets super heavy. And when we don't clear that and remove any of that, then it gets to be really, really heavy. And so part of it was clearing Mm -hmm. on an energetic level and and helping quiet our minds, get in tune with our bodies. Um, And that was a small component. And when we were doing the higher selves, it was like really connecting um, ourselves with who we are truly meant to be and who we really, really want to um, portray or or really come, you know, show through in life. That's not the right wording, but you know, gotcha. <laughs> Light here in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> so we were really tr- connecting to that, and with that energy, we went to uh, the vor- uh, one of the vortexes, and um, and you could you know, we were barefoot on the vortex and you could feel like the subtle energy when you had your feet on the actual rock. And it's like this undeniable energy. And that's when you can really say, okay, this is a thing, right? And feeling that. And so using that energy, we're able to kind of do this really, I mean, I call it an activation. But it's like really almost igniting that higher self. Um, and and we were there with a beautiful sunset and there was just so many magical things happening um, other than my inability to take a picture. Um, <laughs> oh, we'll get to that. Don't worry. Uh, but that that had uh, a whole other powerful component, you know, um, to to your experience. And I know some of you had some some powerful moments there. Um, I don't know if anybody wanted to share. Um, I was going to call Colleen out because I know she had a oh, big awesome. moment during one of the healing sessions. Okay, which one are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, exactly. 
Are you talking about Friday night or are you talking about Saturday night? <laughs> Whichever yeah, one I just want to talk about. One, yeah, you want to share with any of the healing sessions, just uh, maybe what. Well, I guess, honestly, the first night we did the the grounding and just the reconnecting and clearing energy one. And I went there as an open book. I went there as receiving what is meant to be. And um I let go a lot of in my gut and, and I mean, it was like a physical appearance. It was taking literally tears and like, I can just remember like my gut just feeling like it was in all of these like knots and like, it it just felt like a ball of yarn is what like in my mind and my imagination is what it felt like and then when I released it it was like all of these cords just gone you know what I mean like in the midst of the meditation I was shaking I was crying I was I mean it wasn't a cry it was like a like a morning cry like Uh, yeah sobbing it was it was in the belly button. I mean, it was a release for that. So that was huge. And going into the vortex was just accepting my gifts. It was huge for that retreat. It was just all the senses were starting to become activated. And ever since I've come home, it it blows my mind. Like it's it's fun. It's it's one of those things that you ask yourself, is this real life? Is this a fairy tale? Or is it like, or is this really what is meant to be? Like, you're seeing things, you're validating things yourself. Like, now I'm mm-hmm. I'm validating things for my own self, but sharing it with you and Zoe. Like, like I have to, like, say it to the people that I feel confident with. And, like, Lisa on vacation, I had to call her because I was like, my throat chakra was like, you know like all of these things were just it was amazing how like my body was just letting go and just being free so it was so cool just to witness that and feel it and I mean I felt everything like just just feeling it yeah so well and that's something we know if you've listened to any of the episodes that Zoe and I have done together we've talked a lot about how everybody everybody comes here with some sort of gift and our job in this lifetime is to go through and unwrap that and to find that and to share it and yes, I, I, I mean that. yeah and so many I mean, it's like you kind of come into this and I think a lot of people are like ah, I don't really know if I have I'm like no everybody does it just it looks so different for everybody you know again someone could be the piano prodigy someone could be you know whatever I've seen the craziest like artist on Instagram like what how are they creating that you know like wow that their gift is very apparent whereas some of us like we've had to unwrap many many layers of this painful package to get to it and often it is to help shine this light on this journey that we're going through and in very different ways like each of you have such a unique story and a way that you are going to eventually help people go on this journey, you know, and I I know with Karen, we've talked about that many times of like all these different aspects of the healing work that she has done for the last like 25 plus years. And like, how do I like share all of that versus trying to package it up in little boxes? And, you know, even with Sarah, I'm just like opening up and, you know, so everybody resonates with people out there and in your lives and being able to shine your light, but it's like finding that truth and that grounding in it was really what that Saturday was about, was starting to really trust that you're on this path for a reason and to continue to trust that it's safe for me to unwrap these layers and to find that gift and not only find the gift, but to start using it. And Zoe and I had to, that was really what this retreat was about for us too, was like, okay, we, we've opened the gift. Now it's for us to, to use that and to help these women. So then they can go help you know, women or whoever else in their life. So does anyone else kind of want to share a Saturday experience that they had? Or maybe like what you were able to do going home after that? 
I don't know if I said it out loud to anybody, but I was thinking it the whole time. Like, I've never done like drugs or anything like that. But the high that I was experiencing that entire, not even next day, but like I was on such a high leaving this retreat that I would have done anything to hold on to that feeling. Like everything was washed away. Like all the heaviness, all of the everything, all the anxiety, everything that I didn't want was washed away. And it was such a like fresh, clean, rejuvenated, like warm, like just positive, like feeling all the way around. It was such a high high. Like there was nothing that could have happened to me in a couple that couple of days where like it would have bothered me. It would have like it was this whole like you were seeing through a whole new set of lenses. Like life was just experienced differently after that. It felt different. It looked different, and you you process things differently. It was incredible. <laughs> I love that. Well, and again, like when we connect with our inner child, like that's to me that's what it feels like. Like things are lighter, things are more joyful, things are like more fun. And like the more we can bring our inner child with us into everything we do, like it almost feels like that high sticks around because your inner child's like, I'm here for the ride. Like, thanks for bringing me along. You know, and what's interesting in that, like we didn't sugarcoat the fact that like life was going to happen when you came home and that there's probably going to be some sort of little test, right? And I mean, literally, as we're talking about this, Julie gets one of those while we're there. Like she had just declared like all the ways that she's going to like make herself a priority and not like completely forget about herself if people need her. And you got the test while you were there. Like, whoa. And you don't have to go into detail about that. But if you want to just share a little bit about what that was like to just be hit with it right then and there, because some of you got the the test when you got home, you know, but now like hopefully feeling a little bit more equipped to move through that, to kind of come back to your center. But like, that's, that's going to happen. So do you want to share a little bit about that, Julie? Sure. Um, yeah, I received um, a, a text while I was there that um, a pretty tragic thing happened in my small community. And um so I knew I was going to be going back to a very emotional, um, uh, emotional time in the community. And again, um, my default would be to jump right in to be like, okay, I need to do A, I need to do B, I need to be like we need to do. And, and I knew that that was going to happen. And I also feel like the other piece of what happened with it is I knew that it was going to um, be compounded and complicated because I all I I already had overcommitted myself, right? So I already had multiple things planned, and now something else came in, and of course, um, immediately overtaken with who who am I going to let down? What am I like? It was all of that, and it was it was really quite amazing because. I had a different approach and energy going into like, you know, I made an immediate phone call of a commitment I had already made. And I didn't say I couldn't. I just said, hey, can I tell you what's just happened? And um, and they're like, oh, my gosh, give us 10 minutes. Let us figure out what we need to do. And that's absolutely where you need to be. And and it was so freeing. Like, I didn't need to feel guilty about it because, like, of course, that's what I needed to be doing. And then just being able to step up in our community. And sure, I might have taken some leadership roles of trying to help coordinate, but I took on this approach of like, I don't have to do everything. I need to put a gift out there to allow everybody else to do and be a part of. And I put together like this sign up for people. And like, I remember saying that the biggest burden on me was I have to find more things I can put on the sign up because everybody just wanted to be a part of it. And it was this time of me being like, you know what? Like, you don't have to do it all. Like it, like you. And so it was just so, I mean, it was an unbelievably tragic and horrible um, situation. And yet a beautiful situation of an opportunity of an entire community coming together and just 
being there for a family that was going through a horrible time and kids going through a horrible time of losing a great friend and um, people could just be there for each other. And so what typically would have been exhaustion and was just a really huge gift and zero guilt of like, um, so it was really cool. Um, yeah, but I didn't even get to wait till I got home. You're right. Well, and what was powerful because the whole time your thing was, and like that was, if you could have gotten a tattoo that weekend, it would have been that because it's like, I can be there for everybody and take care of myself. Cause you always were left on the back burner. You would do all of those things for everybody else, take on every single word and not even give other people the opportunity to step in because I can do it. And you, you could, like, you're very good at a lot of things, but you could start to see the toll it was taking on you. And so for you to finally like interject that and I can take care of myself too. Like that was so huge. And yeah, what a different experience you allowed yourself in that moment. That was really powerful. You know, Karen, you're unmuted. Did you want to chime in on this one? I didn't realize I was on. Oh, well, I, there you go. I really didn't. Okay, well, do you want I to share? Kind of I, um, I guess, free, but really short. Uh, yeah, I came home and stepped into a quagmire of attacks where um, little Karen basically got put in the corner, like baby got put in the corner. Um, and then little Karen proceeded to have several temper tantrums and act out. She's like, I want um, your attention out there. I want it back. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what happened. And down. Um, but I, but I never lost, but the entire time, the entire time that I've been walking through some stuff the last four months, I've said all along, there's a reason for this. Mm -hmm. It is no coincidence that I went to Sedona, I found her and came home and immediately got thrown into a situation that, um, it was only work. I mean, work is work, but, but it wasn't that it was about work. It was, it was triggering. Um, and I'm still in the midst of it, but it was triggering, um, something inside of me where it trying to integrate, I hadn't tried to put words around this, trying to integrate that inner Karen that I found when I was there into me and, and becoming whole. And I think, I struggled with that for a little bit, but I got my power. Yeah, you did. Being here tonight has helped. Awesome. Well, lot. that's part of it is, yeah, being out there, it was easy to connect with your inner child, right? The environment fostered that. We go home and it's like, does she have a place here? Or when you go to work, are you still trying to be someone who you aren't? Are you denying parts of you, you know, in certain situations where your inner child, like, no, 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 you don't get to like abandon parts of me. And so I think that was kind of a lesson for a lot of us throughout this journey was like, where are there parts where you're still abandoning her? And like, well, I can't let you be seen like this at work or I can't let you be seen around, you know, with these people. And so she really challenged a lot of you to be like, hey, that work you did on Sedona, that was for real. And I need you to show up at home like that, too. And it, it certainly she got your guys' attention. So. But kind of moving on to something a little bit lighter. So like the connection with women because again you came in knowing no one as well but me right um i will say um the first night we were there when you gave us the opportunity to share stories and and whatnot like this was a scary um idea for me to start with anyway i mean i i am not somebody who is quick to share my opinions my thoughts my inner feelings be vulnerable it takes me time to connect with people because I, I tend to be, have been very guarded for much of my life. And so um, the first night was a struggle for me to be able to open up in a way that was, um, it was a very emotional, right? I did it. I shared. Um, but there was absolute, like, it was the safest possible way and place and group of people that I could have chosen to do that with and to share with and you you get that no matter like if you've met before or not 
everybody's there for the same reason. And we all believe in, in ourselves and each other. And so just being able to open up and share like that initially, and then like receive so much love and support around that immediately creates balance with people, right? You see, like I showed my ugly, like my <laughs> real ugly, like emotional stuff and raw stuff. And we all did that with each other. Yeah. And there's no judgment and there's no, like there's nothing but love for each other. And so you feel like you are in it together. And that immediately creates, you know, this sisterhood almost of like, I have got you. Mm -hmm. And we all know moving forward, like we can reach out to any of us and we have got each other's backs, like no matter what it is, it doesn't matter how ugly we think it is, how raw or vulnerable or just deep it is. Like, I know I can reach out to any of you for the rest of my life and you will be there to love me through it. And I, I don't know that I experienced that kind of bond anywhere else in my life in a similar way. Which I, I mean, even if I had gotten nothing out, else out of the retreat, which like it's, it couldn't be further from the truth, like these relationships now are ones that I hold so close to my heart and are so important to me because we've, we're, we're working through this together and, and we can relate and understand each other in ways that I can't necessarily do with other people in my life. It's like, a true definition of like a soul bond and like this energetic bond that you all now have with each other. And, and it's, that's powerful stuff. And you're right. A lot of times we don't allow ourselves to make those kinds of connections in our everyday life because sometimes like it generally doesn't feel safe or our ego won't let us be open and vulnerable to even connect and form those. And so, but in this kind of setting, it just, it really allowed for that. And it was really beautiful to see you all just kind of melt into that and just create those bonds because yeah those those babies don't get severed <laughs> awesome anyone else have anything i want to share before we we ask our, our final question you good i i don't know how this stuff works i don't know how zoe and tammy do their thing um and and i made a conscious decision to i don't need to know I just need to show up with an open heart and I am blessed to have a tribe that I've had for a couple of decades. Um, uh, it's a recovery tribe and they're very important to me. And I, but I've never been able to bring my full self, my Christian faith, my badass work self my and i'm slightly being facetious no i am i am with that. um we absolutely are on uh, that my 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 healing my inner child stuff my food stuff i've never brought that whole of me to any other group before and the space that you all created for me to be my whole self um this is going to sound funny, but I say this with all my heart. I felt so comfortable with you that I sang in front of you. I don't see. Oh, um, and I felt so comfortable when I was listening to that song. I was made for more. I had to belt it out. Lisa gave me permission and I did it. And th that is the ultimate depiction of a safe space as far mm -hmm. as I'm concerned. And and um, I've just missed you guys. I've, I've missed you. Oh, good stuff, ladies. So to wrap it up, because again, Zoe and I mentioned on the beginning, or maybe I mentioned on the intro of this, that we are going to be hosting another inner child healing retreat in November. And we've added time to it because we're like, oh my gosh, like we crammed so much into those days. So we added some time at the beginning and the end. And like coaching sessions beforehand and a follow-up after like just to really because like we you guys just we didn't even know the kind of magic that was going to come out of that and so like how do we continue to like 
nurture that and foster that and all of those things. And so like your guys' feedback on that was super helpful. And, you know, and we also realized too, like not everyone is ready to just jump into something like this. And, but I guess like, what would you tell someone that has maybe been listening, you know, to the podcast for a while or has, you know, maybe followed me on social media because I obviously talk about inner child stuff 24 seven. But to be able to, someone that is maybe afraid to go on this journey because like, I don't know what I'm going to find and I don't want to open this stuff back up. What would you tell someone that is in that position? You deserve this. You're worth it. You're worth every, every hard minute that you put into it and every dime that you spend on it. Your inner child is worth it and you as the adult are worth it. If someone's doubting that they want to do it, throw the doubt away. Invest in yourself because if you don't, who will? Honest to God, who will? You know, I just, Pammy, I've been with you since day one. And I... You've seen the good, the bad, the ugly, the really ugly. And all the beautiful. And and now you've seen me grow and Yeah. You know, and I just I can't say it all. And Zoe and and this tribe that we have it's sisters that I get to pick that I didn't get from God and like Sarah said I wouldn't have a doubt in my mind of picking up the phone and calling or reaching out to any one of you and saying I need you not I miss you guys so much that I don't think that I would wait for a retreat so when's our next retreat <laughs> it has to be a reunion so. retreat. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm here for it. I'm here for but it. No, I mean, anybody who thinks that they, they aren't worth it, they're wrong. You have to invest in yourself because no one else is going to do it for you. Yeah. Awesome. And they do have Thank gifts. So. Everybody has a gift. And so we just has to help manifest mine. The more, because it's, it's there. there. It's, it's there. there. She told her and I talked about you it. took a huge <laughs> massive step towards that so props to you oh yeah guys guess what I'm doing in October I'm going back to school for a little bit I am uh, taking a Greek counseling class to get my certificate oh, look at so we look at uh, <laughs> oh I'm so thrilled to hear that Lisa this is yeah. oh yeah, yeah. definitely so, Yes, this yep. is an meant for you for sure. Yeah. And it's oh, one of those things oh. like taking that inspired action, like to watch your gifts unfold now that you yep. took inspired action like that. Like God, like finally, like I needed you to, <laughs> to do something so I could unfold the rest for you. Yeah. So that, that was powerful. Awesome. How about you, Sarah? What would okay. you tell someone? Oh, Karen. And then I'll call him Sarah. You got okay. your hand raised. Really quick and really succinctly. Hey. Hey. If someone has come across you, come across the idea of this retreat, that is not an accident. Mm. There's a reason that someone is even has this cross their mind and they just need to shut off their brain and the ego and the guilt and the whatever that comes up in the way and just listen to that little inner self that put them in this path in the first place. I, like, that's, that's what I'm I was... Give her my mic. Like, you want to drop this? Like, you're like, you might drop on that one because you're absolutely right. Like, there's a reason you're seeing this podcast or a reason you've come across my stuff or thank you for that. That's... Yeah, that's it. No, yeah. mine was tagging on to what Karen said. Like, if you are curious, you have to listen to that. That's your intuition that you need to follow. And that's the first step on this journey is like if you're curious there's enough there that is telling you this is the right direction to go and you need to follow that path 
You might not know where it's going to go and what it includes. That's okay. Nobody does. We are all working through it all the time. But listen to your gut. And if it, if yeah, you're listening to this, uh, I hope we see you at the next retreat. <laughs> because, <laughs> yeah. And uh, Tammy and Zoe's gifts are so authentic and they've changed our lives. I, I'm speaking for the group when I say this, they've absolutely changed our lives. This retreat changed our lives. It changed the trajectory of like our path and our healing. And um, you can't put it into words, right? It's, we've spent probably two hours at this point trying to put it into words, but you can't. And these two women who are hosting this are like angels for all of us. They were sent here and are sharing their gifts in a way that is changing not only our lives, but our children's lives too. And so it's a great place to be. I hope people will join us. Yes. Oh, thank you. Thank you for that. Julie, you want to share something? If you feel that you can't afford to afford the time or afford the resources, I would just encourage you to reframe that, that you really can't afford not to, oh. um, that you deserve it. And um, it's the best investment you'll make in yourself. Oh, Colleen, did you want to wrap it up? We'll sound us off. Go off of Sarah and just be really thankful for you too, because I'll never be able to repay you. Because because of you too, I get to live on for my baby boy. And he gets to live in my family. And every single one of you guys have held such a very, very good spot in my heart. And just to be me as beautiful. I can't even say, I can't even say it. Thanks. Just, just to be me. And it feels really good just to be me for what, and in many years, I've actually came home from Arizona. And I get to just be me. You know, my family is thriving. My kids are feeling it. They're processing their emotions. Same as us. And it's very good to see. So thank you. Oh, well, and thank you for, I mean, all of you, the sacrifices you made to be on this retreat, to do this healing work. And so, I mean, the, the list could go on and on about all the things that you did to get to this point and to really show up for yourselves. And so like, thank you from Zoe and I for truly showing up and bringing your full self and fully committing to connecting with your inner child on this journey. Like you exceeded our expectations. Like, again, like we, we were prepared for magic to happen and we knew it was going to be incredible and we trusted that. But we have said so many times, like, we could have never have expected that first retreat, especially the way it was put together on sh such short notice with, you know, rebranding my business and starting the podcast and like, oh, yeah, and I'm going to host a retreat a month later. Like, it was so many things in my life happening. And for all of you to trust in this happening and it happening for a reason and showing up despite all of those challenges because you all could have been like I'm out you know and you all like nope there's something I need to be here for and so so thank you for allowing Zoe and I this experience as well it was life-changing for both of us I'm speaking for her and I will let her speak but um there aren't enough words to express my gratitude for all of you and, and trusting me to be on your journey so thank you do you want to send us off Zoe yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't have the words and I can't articulate how grateful I am to have been part of your journey and having you guys come into my journey. Um, it, it just, it, it validated me and Tammy um, that what we're doing and um, that in itself was such a gift for, for us. 
So um, I'm forever grateful um, for you guys. And I'm, I just, I'm, I feel so blessed to, to know all of you and each of you have, um, I've taken something away, you know, I've, I've given me a little gift, of different sorts, and I carry that with me every day. And, um, I don't take that lightly. No. Yeah. Oh, well, this was, this was everything I hoped it would be. Ladies, thank you so much. And thank you for sharing your heart, your energy tonight to help inspire other people to go on this journey because this is part of it. And you are now a part of this tribe to help more people heal their inner child and to connect. And so thank you for being like on the front lines with Zoe and I to help do this work. Like it's, this is a powerful tribe and blessed to be a part of it. So thank you all so much.